When it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I don't think there's ever been a more controversial character or movie as Captain Marvel. I mean, come on, regardless of how you feel about her, you can't deny that there's been a lot of very strong opinions flying around about the MCU's take on Carol Danvers, even before Marvel officially released her solo movie earlier this year. Some people complained about her either being too boring or too perfect, others complained she's not perfect enough and should have had more screen time in the MCU in general, with both sides throwing in different types of complaints about the solo movie's writing and story, as well as the size of Carol's role in Marvel's latest big hoorah, Avengers Endgame. I'm sure none of those issues were helped when you had a bunch of people claiming that you absolutely had to see Captain Marvel or else you wouldn't understand her role in Endgame either. Everybody in this room is about that superhero life. And if you don't mind my asking, where the hell have you been all this time? There are a lot of other planets in the universe. And unfortunately, they didn't have you guys. What the f***? What's going on? I have no idea what's happening! Funny thing is though, after rewatching Endgame this past week, I realized that Marvel could have not only easily solved pretty much all of these issues everybody had with Captain Marvel, both character and movie, but also could have, potentially, brought the fans back together and even made some people new Captain Marvel fans if they just made one simple change in Avengers Endgame. Have the Mad Titan Thanos casually whoop Carol's ass at some point in the movie. Off with his head! Now hang on, hang on, I'm not trying to be a troll or just talk shit or anything like that. I really do have a point I'm trying to make here. So before you get your internet pitchforks out and dislike this video into oblivion, at least hear me out first. Now after looking over mine and everybody else's complaints about the character and all her appearances throughout the MCU, I'm fairly confident that you can basically boil them all down to how powerful she's been shown to be up till the events of Endgame. Now I'm not saying there's anything wrong with her being the ultimate, most powerful hero or whatever if that's what Kevin Feige and Marvel really want. I mean yeah, they definitely gave Movie Carol a major power boost over her comic book counterpart, but honestly, so long as we get some good conflicts for Carol to fight through, some good writing to test the character and make her grow as a person by the end of whatever movie she's in, I'm sure it wouldn't have been that big a deal. The problem though is that right now, Carol is way too strong, to the point where nothing can really do anything to her. I mean, she managed to casually destroy Kree bombs and warships in her first movie, then moved on to easily plowing through Thanos' ship, army, and even Thanos himself, the same guy who various MCU heroes couldn't even slow down, regardless of how many Infinity Stones he had access to. It's basically the exact same issue most versions of Superman struggle with. Like remember in Justice League, after everybody brought Superman back from the dead, how he was basically able to not only go around saving people like he used to, but also managed to beat up everybody else on the Justice League before kicking Steppenwolf's ass by himself at least twice? I mean this dude showed up and casually beat the absolute shit out of a guy who took on old gods, Amazonians, humans, Atlanteans, a Green Lantern, and the other members of the Justice League. That's insane. Seriously, if nobody else on the league can even annoy Steppenwolf, then who gives a shit about him? Just point the guy who can survive a nuke in the direction of wherever the bad guys are, and that's it, movie's done. And I know I've just been ranting about Superman in a Captain Marvel video, but the point's the same. Having a character who's so powerful that nothing on screen poses any kind of a challenge for them is boring. There's no real stakes involved, and even the stakes that are there feel really forced and fake. Speaking of non-existent stakes, Carol being as strong as she is also takes away from the idea of Thanos being all that much of a threat in the first place. I mean, we get all this buildup of him being the biggest and baddest dude in the universe. Master, you cannot. Thanos is the most powerful being in the universe. Yeah, but I mean, this Thanos we're talking about, he's the toughest there is. And we even saw him smacking around both Hulk and Thor in Infinity War, two of the strongest Avengers up till that point. But who cares about all that if Carol can just fly in and smack him just as easily as he's been smacking everybody else? I mean honestly, do the other Avengers really even need to be involved in the final fight in Endgame? I mean I get that Carol wasn't on Earth when Thanos traveled through time and they were kinda caught off guard, but come on, we know they can call her whenever they want. Oh hey guys, we got this giant purple guy to go fight, but who cares? Hey Carol, wanna come back to Earth for this fight real quick? I'm sure you got it. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but Carol makes all that buildup we got over the rest of the MCU feel completely pointless, and makes the rest of the Avengers not matter as much when they're supposed to be teaming up against the ultimate big bad. Probably most importantly though, her being so strong also opens up the same story issues Justice League had after bringing back Superman. You know, outside of all the other problems with that movie's plot. These godlike figures are way too strong and wind up having to be written out of most of the movie and the final fight. Otherwise everything could be solved in like 5 seconds. Just like Superman waiting for fucking ever to help out in the final fight, then leaving mid fight to go save some random people, even though there's a few other members on the league that probably could have helped Barry too, we don't see Carol really do all that much throughout Endgame. 
For example, if she really is supposed to be the strongest character ever, then she really didn't need a team to go and help her beat up a weakened Thanos at the beginning of the movie. So why did she agree to go with everybody? Story-wise, I get why they all needed to go, to find out what Thanos did with the gems and be all depressed and whatever, but Carol had no reason to agree to go with everybody, and given what all we've seen from her, she could have just as easily killed Thanos and reported back, job well done. And in the final fight against Thanos' army, I mean I get that the Avengers didn't really have time or reason to call her before Thanos showed up, but after she got back to Earth, Carol swept everybody, then got taken out with a single infinity punch, never to be seen till after Tony killed himself and saved the universe. Where'd she go after that? Probably the land of just forget about it so we can focus on somebody else real quick. A writer's favorite lazy place to go. All that having been said though, if Marvel had the stones to show Carol getting her ass handed to her, regardless of whether it's when the Avengers are looking for the Infinity Gauntlet at the beginning of the movie or when she squares up with Thanos towards the end, they could have solved all the problems I mentioned earlier and even given Carol an interesting character flaw to explore in Captain Marvel 2. Not only does this loss keep Thanos at his scary, ultimate big bad status who needs a team to take him down, not only does this make the rest of the Avengers more relevant since they wouldn't have an invincible godlike figure to fall back on, <coughs> not only does this mean Carol wouldn't have to get written out of most of the movie, meaning she actually gets something to do throughout more of the movie and therefore gets more screen time, and not only would this getting knocked down only to get back up thing be a decent throwback to a big part of the message in the original Captain Marvel movie, but having Carol actually lose against Thanos, cementing the idea that she can't do everything on her own and that she's not as powerful as she might think, could have made her an overall more interesting and relatable character, especially if the PTSD angle the Russos gave to Thor were actually given to her instead. Now I'm not saying Carol needs to be fat or have tons of jokes made about her or anything like that, but it could emphasize that her belief in herself as a solo powerhouse and as a hero could have been shaken pretty badly. Play the scene out correctly, and we have the makings of Carol developing alcoholism like in the comics. Remember how I mentioned earlier that having an all-powerful character, good or bad, is extremely boring, since a lot of times writers always end up sticking them in situations they can punch their way out of? Having Carol turn to drinking as a coping mechanism and forcing her to find her way back to sobriety not only gives her a character flaw that a future writer could explore in an interesting way, but it also forces Carol to solve a problem she can't just punch her way out of. She has to use her brain, reach out to friends, all while trying to handle the stress a hectic superhero life throws her way, thereby making her character more dynamic, more relatable, and more interesting. It worked for both her and Tony in the comics for years, so why couldn't we see it in the movies too? Now obviously everything I mentioned here is strictly my opinion, and I don't expect everybody watching this video to agree with everything I've been saying. If you like Captain Marvel as is, that's totally fine. You can like what you like, I can like what I like, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that Marvel had an opportunity to show a different side of Captain Marvel that I think would have been something unique and interesting to explore in the MCU, while also reinforcing the ideas and plot points we've already gotten in earlier MCU movies. Maybe they can still play around with some of these ideas in later movies, but I guess we'll have to wait through Phase 4 onwards to see what all the MCU writers decide to put together. But anyways guys, that's my take on how Avengers Endgame could have potentially solved everybody's problems with Captain Marvel. If you guys agreed with anything I said in this video, or if you have your own thoughts you want to throw out there, then go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then go ahead and click that like button, and if you're new, maybe consider clicking that subscribe button too. I've also got links to my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon in the description. You should probably check those out too. And if you want to see more of my content, then you can click the link to my last video. It's right there in the middle of your screen. Alright, and I will see you all next time.